What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 41, returning today with a brand new season as our sixth year at the Swansea.com Stadium gets underway, Champions League football coming to South Wales for the first time and our budget, oh finally! is going to be £133 million. For all these years, we've been working with limited funds here with Swansea. Finally, we got ourselves a really solid budget. And I'd say a realistic one as well, going into the Champions League. So as we take a quick look at the squad for Season 6, and you'll see what we're working with here. Obviously, don't forget a few of these players are away uh, on international duty right now in the European Championship. Um, we said at the back end of last season, you know, got some transfer targets from you guys. Where do we improve the team? I think we're all in agreement, right? We do want to score more goals, so maybe an elite new striker and possibly an elite new centre-half as well to come in uh, for the long-term success for Rodden as we're still playing Kjellman out of position right now. Um, but the team as a whole, obviously, we've uh, we've seen Sol be released on a free transfer. Jamal Lowe is retired. There, there are a few big decisions to make this year as well. What do we do with Carl out of contract come the end of the season? But now, a rating loan and Clark out on loan at Wolves and also five years younger as well. Do we bring back Scott? Do we keep Carl? Do we keep Clark out on loan at uh, Molyneux as well? Um, you know, it's th th there's a few young players that I do want to give game time to this season, such as Charlie Karnick, who's come back, and Bangu. Gura as well. But for the most part, the team going to the Champions League, we don't look out of place in the Champions League. I wouldn't say we're we're an elite team yet. We're still four and a half star, but we're only one or two pieces away from being a five star team. That's the thing. Oh <laughs> finally! Oh finally! It's taken five years for EA to finally give his potential back. It's only showing great, but listen, we will take it. We will take anything we can get. But um, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, we're not, we're not that far off five star. I think we're only like one or two pieces off being a five star team. And we should be able to become one if we do make the right signings in this summer window. So yeah, it's a fixed squad. We've got a lot of players still out on loan. A couple of players about to leave on loan tomorrow. But um, yeah, it's, it's a good team. It just needs slight improvement. Whoa, look at all the players. Just one year left in their deal as well. Goodness gracious me, that is a lot. That is a lot more than I expected. I was going down the list there thinking, oh, not many players in the contract coming at the end of the season. It's like 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10 players who uh, who need new contracts. Um, I'll do this off camera, but um, I think, I think yeah, obviously like Bangura and, uh, and Bamber are going to get one, as is Traore, the youngsters here. Um, Cam, I'm not sure about. I think I will give one to Carl for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think for Ethan Laird, for Dan James, and certainly for Marchetti as well, I might not give him extensions. And as for Cam, I'm undecided about it. I think I still need at least another week or two of consideration there. So as we get through the first day, uh, we'll see those two young players go out on loan. Brennan to Rangers and Seca to Leicester. Uh, there is a bit for Matthews from Atalanta. I did say I'm, I'm not against selling... Um, him on the uh, on the uh, on the list of players of their deal that come at the end of the year. So to be fair here, what I might try and do is ask for a smaller transfer fee and include a sell on clause. I mentioned before for me though, this is always like you, you never seem to get it to come off. But if I say two point five mil, forget the forget the large fee now with a twenty percent sell on clause as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know I can never seem to get sell on clause to work for me. I get asked all the time, Doxy, well, when you're selling your young players, why don't you add on a sell on clause? This is why managers are always so offended by me adding it on. Do you see Al Nasser want to take a Seca to fill the gap of Cristiano Ronaldo's retirement? So totally fine with that. Uh, Traore is wanted by Lons. He's just signed a new deal though, literally yesterday. So of course he's not going to go. And the, these are two very interesting deals. Hoff and I wanting Charlie Creswell. I'm not against letting go of, to be fair. And Barcelona wanting Joe Rodden. Well, the Creswell deal I consider, but uh, Rodden's still technically club captain. And I, I don't... If he's going to go anywhere, I don't see him going there, per personally. Uh, we see Aston Villa want to take Innocent Bamber on a loan deal. But again, I want to send this guy somewhere I know he's going to play. I'm not sure it's going to be there at Villa Park. But also PSV, uh, putting in a bit for Jamal Lewis. We've already sold a couple of our players to the, uh, to the Dutch top tier. Two, two to Ajax, actually, in uh, Grimes and, uh, and uh, Kambango. Um... 
so I don't mind that. Jamal Lewis gave, gave us a great couple of years of service on a free transfer on the left-hand side. But now 30, obviously not getting any better at 76 overall. And out of contract coming at the end of the season, I'm totally fine letting Jamal go. Wait, is that a contract coming at the end of the season or is it next season? I don't know. But even so, happy to have to cash in. Two couple of years of great service on a free transfer. But uh, now totally fine to sell looks someone younger. And I think it probably played a bit more there at Brentford, to be fair. Innocent Bamba wanted by Thomas Frank. I'm okay with that loan deal. I think you're playing more at the GTEC than he would at a Champions League Aston Villa team now. Uh, that deal can now be negotiated. So let's quickly do this here. Once again, a tip for those of you that struggle to loan your players out. You delegate the first offer and then you negotiate the second to a 40-60 wage. But it's always 40-60 and uh, the deal should go through after that. Uh, Sorba Thomas, another Dutch side. This time he's at Altmar wanting Sorba Thomas. Again, he's out of contract coming the end of the season. We've got so many squad wingers here now, especially after the likes of Bangura and uh, Konik have come back as well. So for Sorba Thomas, barely played in the two years he was here. Totally fine letting him go to AZ Alkmaar. And who was that other bit I just saw there? Oh, Dan James wanted by Nottingham Forest. Just relegated to the championship. I did say I'm not against cashing in now in the final year of his contract. Uh, I'll think about it. Him being homegrown might possibly save him here. Before I worry about incoming, so I want to sort out the uh, the list of uncertainties here, if you will. As well, they will delegate that loan offer for Bamba from Lille. As well as another bid for Sorba Thomas. Who's that from? Lorient. Uh, quickly negotiate that one to, to 4 mil as well. Um, I don't know what you guys are saying as me, but like before, before you sort out, you know, who's coming in, you want to get your house in order first. You know what I mean? You want to know who's staying and uh, who's going. So we will uh, we negotiate that deal to four million pounds. Was there another bid as well? Um, oh, another big bid for Traore. He's, he literally just signed a contract though, so he's he's not going to go. I might as well block offers, man, because I don't mind loaning him out, but not not going to sell him. Oh no, who's that? Everton. <laughs> Sean, didn't you get the memo? This rifle then for Cell. Cell, you ain't got a license to carry this sort of rifle at Goodison, man. He's staying here in South Wales, mate. He's going nowhere. And uh, Inter wanting Bubakar has just come back. But, oh, wow. Wow, they're offering me Jimenez? Oh, he's 33 now, of course. I was going to say. Fair play, but uh, still 85 rated. If you're starting center off. But again, just signed a new contract like a week ago. I don't know what you guys are saying to me. When a player has signed a new contract, they are officially off limits for the whole season. Even in January, I'm, uh, I'm not going to cash in. Um, if I was going to sell a squad centre half, it would probably be Nathan Wood over Creswell. But then again, uh, no, I think I'm going to turn that bid down. I'm still thinking about the Dan James one. So there we go. Our first sale goes through. Jamal Lewis off to PSV. I love that as well, man. Talk about resurrecting your career. On the scrap heap at Newcastle. Everyone writing you off saying you're finished. Yeah, we took a chance on him. A couple of years in South Wales. Solid understudy for Jordan Boz. He's turned his career around. And now he's off to PSV for his final few years in pro football. So we get 6.5 mil for that, which raises our budget ever so slightly. Um... I, I got tons of transfer targets, but I still feel like I need to sort out the uh, the, the long list of players with their deal up coming the end of the year uh, and to continue to sell some of the score players as well, including this man, Sorba Thomas. Uh, he's also off as well for a small transfer. Again, we won't get much, but because we've got so much depth here, we're overloaded in terms of numbers. We do need to start clearing out the deadwood, if you will. Sorba Thomas was like my number one player I needed to sell. He's off for a small transfer fee. As Seca goes out on loan to Al Nasser, uh, for uh, for two years as well. And as we continue to negotiate offers here, uh, it seems as though Bamber is more likely to go and join Brentford on a two-year loan deal. So please, I can keep an eye on him there in West London. There is a bid for Dedich. Solid year from Dedich last season. As Marseille put in a bit of 50.9 mil. Like I said before, that market valuation to me is completely underestimated. To me, he's worth at least 60 mil. But after just one year, dual side of fullback, scored in the Carrot Cup final last year, but don't forget, he's uh, he's going nowhere. I, I really like Dedic. And as we once again negotiate a deal for Bamba with Lille, uh, we see that Matthew's now wanted by RC Lon. So again, this time, I'm, I'm not even going to put a sell on clause on. I'm totally fine letting him go. Yes, he's already 72 rated at 20 years old. But again, I said this before, like we've got, we've got players that are better than him are around the same age we just we've got so many star youth players so the worst of the bunch i'm happy to let go permanently and as we see kyle matthews also go to rc lawns for 4.9 mil we shall take that um i do wonder if it's time to make a new signing now 
Um, we said for this season, you know, where, where are we going to improve? C, B and S, T are my main two areas of concern. Um, I don't know what to do with Cam, man. I really don't. The problem with Archer is that he's no longer growing anymore. He's, he's had two serious injuries last season, missed six months worth of football, and out of contract coming at the end of the year. Even at 26, I hate to say it, but I feel as though after four fantastic years of us, it might be time to say, do you know what, Cam? Thanks for the memories, but it's time for us to look elsewhere. Koita, I think, has now surpassed him. He's still getting better as well. And I, I, I still could possibly see Koita playing deeper or come off the bench for a star new striker. That, to me, is what we should do. I lo we, we love Cam. We'll always love Cam. But it's time to be ruthless now. We're a Champions League team. His injuries of... Uh, of Preventing him getting any better. We've got Vasquez who can do his job as well. I'm, I'm okay letting Cam go now in the final year of his deal. Oh, and that's perfect. That is literally perfect. One of those moments where you've got to say thank you to the EA gods because that is not just realistic, but it's also nice as well. Villa finished just above us last season. They are a Champions League team like us. And for a homecoming for Cam as what would be a backup striker for... Who would have been up top? Hlozek, I think it is. This makes absolutely perfect sense. We love you, Cam. Our number 22, but for 20, okay, 20, maybe 21 million pounds, we're going to sell him back to where it all began for him as a young lad. Oh, fine, 20 million, am I? 20 million pounds, and Cameron is going to return to Villa Park. I have to say, that is literally perfect. I'm really pleased with that. Every era comes to an end at some point. Four years of Cam leading our line, but after last season's injury struggles, I think we all knew this was the most likely outcome. But I'm so pleased he's gone to Villa. Yep, four good years and now back to where it all began. £20 million sale as Cam returns to his boyhood club, Aston Villa. And we'll still be playing Champions League football. That move has worked out literally perfect for every single person. Aston Villa wearing about the homegrown rulings. That might be a possibility for next season if they keep up this sort of form. Right, uh, so I, I, I think we should get a new striker now. And I've got so many names on the shortlist here, man. So many names suggested in the comments. So many players that I've been scouting myself. But when I've looked at the comments and I've seen what player has been asked and recommended more than any other for the striker position... I mean, there's one name that's constantly cropped up. Not just in this save, but in my Luton Town career mode as well. I know I've got a lot of Irish fans that follow me, man. And after moving on from Brighton in the summer transfer, we, not in this summer transfer, in this save, he's gone to buy Leverkusen. But last year, Leverkusen missed out on Champions League football, finishing in fifth place. He's not settled at the buy arena, and he wants to return back to the English football pyramid. And a return to Champions League football as well. This makes sense for every single party. You've wanted him. I've seen him in the comments so many times. Evan Ferguson never used him before. Let's bring the Irish wonder kid back to the Premier League. It's a new club record transfer fee. £77.5 million and on an 80 grand a week salary. Five year contract. Evan Ferguson is back in the Premier League. This time for Swansea as he'll return to Champions League football after Leverkusen finishing fifth in the Bundesliga last season. I've seen this guy commented so many times. Dots, can you bring in Ferguson again? Not just in this save, but in the Luton Town career mode as well. I know I've got a lot of Irish fans that follow me as well, and he's definitely the future of Irish football. Never used him before. Never used him before, so really excited to give him a go for the first time ever, and he's definitely a step up on Cam Archer as well, as being a few years younger too, as he'll take the number 10, worn by fans, and favourite Jamal Lowe and hopefully it'll be just as good in the big games. He'll be playing a lot of them this season in the Premier League, the Cups and the Champions League as well. Welcome to the Swansea.com Stadium, Evan Ferguson. Absolutely buzzing with this deal here and again. Never used him before, still getting better, just 23. 95 strength, 91 finishing, 87 ball control, 87 shot power. This dude to me, like, where's the weak spot? I mean, he's, he's, he's quick. He's ridiculously strong. He can head the ball in as well. Uh, his finishing is elite. I mean, this guy is just unbelievable, man. Get that attack and work credit from medium to high, and there's there's no problem with this guy. He looks absolutely elite and the perfect replacement for Cam Archer. And as we negotiate a bid for Traore to leave and join Heidenheim on loan, uh, just turned down that bid there for, uh, for Jao Gomez. There's another bid for Charlie Creswell, uh, this time 16.5 mil from Brian. And like I said, I'm not against selling either he or Nathan Wood. 
And whilst Creswell is a couple of ratings higher than Nathan Wood, he's the one that's got the interest right now. I think Brighton's quite a realistic destination as well. If I can squeeze around 18 to 20 mil out of Deserby, I'd, I'd call that a decent sale there for what is currently a fourth choice centre half. He's not going to play much anyway. I like that deal. I think that makes sense. Charlie Creswell off to play under Deserby 20 mil. I like that. And there we go, Traore off to Hyde 9 on a two-year loan deal, but also Charlie Creswell's deal has been completed. 20 million sale to Brighton, and that's a, that's a really good deal, that. It's both a good fee for us to get for a player who took on a free transfer two years ago, already flipping him for a 20 million pound profit, and a player that was fourth choice, sometimes fifth choice centre-half going to Brighton to get more game time under the Zerbe. Quite realistic, I'd say. I like that a lot, so yeah, really pleased with, uh, with those two deals there. And as an academy that comes in in August here, we said this year we weren't going to be doing any youth scouting because we've just got too many good youth players here. I, I think I'm going to promote both of them in the academy and just loan them out. Victor Garrido looking absolutely brilliant there, growing really nicely under the radar, uh, now 65 rated. But also, of course, the uh, the player we're most excited about, Papa. Afanasios Papa, upper rating 66 overall, the six-foot Greek centre half of 91 to 94 potential, who I am literally almost certain is destined to our potential to be special, which he does. We need to add him straight to the loan list and get this guy out. Oh, and Garrido's exciting prospect as well. There we go. And so our budget now down to just shy of hundred million pounds. Taking a look at the squad here and thinking about what we need right now. Um, I have a concern about the depth in terms of numbers, but certainly not in terms of quality. I mean, it's a brilliant set of reserve players. Um, albeit not, not that many of them, of course, going to the Champions League this year. We'll need a fixed squad, of course. We know we're going to loan these two Greek center out as well. Marchetti is probably going to go at some point as well. Um, again, I, I'm probably thinking right now, for first team, a new center half. Flamingo's 81 overall at 25 years old and still getting better. But Sherwood, as we know, is playing out of position. Creswell's just gone. Ron's now in his 30s. I do think for a first team player, a new center half, but also a backup fullback as well for Dedic and Bosno and Ethan Laird out of contract is probably going to go, we assume, at some point. Um, and in terms of backup fullbacks, I mean, I've got, I've got a lot on the list that it could come in and do a solid job as an understudy for both Jordan and Dedic as well, both at right back and left back. And one player that really intrigues me at left back as well, that will be available on a cut price deal, is the Wolves fullback, Hugo Bueno. Right now, 82 overall, which means he can compete with Jordan Bosby. He'll probably be a bench player. But at 25 years old, still has many years to go before he starts showing signs of decline. He's quick. He's got good energy. And he's got amazing technical stats of 87 dribbling, 88 ball control, and 80 for crossing as well. And available on a cut price deal at a contract come the end of the season. This, to me, seems like a no-brainer. I say bring him in. Yeah, we might have quite a lot of money. We're still looking for good value for money deals. And for £20 million, this is a steal. Just like Jao Gomez coming in from Molyneux on a cut prize transfer. 20 mil for Hugo Bueno. That's a steal. Another player who I'm yet to use in career mode, but on a five-year deal, 70 grand a week. Hugo Bueno is in to give Jordan Bosz some competition on that left-hand side. Great deal for 20 mil as well. We're fleecing Gary O'Neill's walls right now with the arrivals of Bueno and Gomez in these two years on cut price transfers and very pleased to bring him in on a bargain deal. Um, again, 25 years old, so I still think he can get a little bit better. I'd like to get the strength up. That's really my only concern with the guy. The strength is quite low and obviously in a very physical league like the Premier League, that does need to improve. We'll get the defense to work credit from medium to high as well. But other than that, there isn't really a negative to this guy. Slightly better stamina, slightly better strength, a high defensive work rate, and this guy's got everything we want as a backup or starting left back. I just don't know who should start here, Jordan or Bueno. And as I'm agreeing some loan deals here for Garrido and Papa. I uh, just want to show you this real briefly before the opening day against Spurs. We've got two bids here, and this is really funny, but uh, Flamingo's wanted by Hoffenheim at 25.8 mil. Of course, turning that one down, but we just signed Bueno from Wolves, and Gary and was like, right, I need a left back. Who can I bring in? What, what about the left back that the team who just bought my left back have got? You know, let's do a little switcheroo here. But we'll give you more money for the Aussie. Sorry, Gary, but uh, you got to look elsewhere. I want them both. I'm greedy. Greedy jocks. Right, <laughs> first game of the season then. And it is indeed going to be Spurs at home as we're going to kick off our first 
uh, season in the Champions League with a win here against Postacoglu's side who will be desperate to get back in the Champions League themselves after missing out on European football last season. Uh, was it European football they missed out on? Or was it, well, it was certainly Champions League. But even so, Spurs, first game of the season in South Wales. Let's kickstart the season off with big three points here in, in uh, South Wales. Come on, you swans. Just looked over the footage. It was uh, sixth for Spurs last season. I can't remember what team it was that finished tenth and absolutely stunned me. That was uh, Liverpool. But, uh, Europa League, but not Champions League for Spurs for this season. There's Kanunin's shot the flex all the way to Sinistera at the far post. And Vicario had to make a fingertip save to prevent it from squirming in. Still no deal. But again, now, now we're making the step up now. You know, when we, we first joined the Premier League ranks, we were talking about just taking points from these games and calling them good results. Now, a point at home against a, a team like Spurs is a bad result. We're going for wins in these games now. It's that growth mindset we're trying to develop, you know. If you want to be a winner, you've got to think like a winner. And what do winners want to do? Win. Clues in the name. As Alvarez finds James Madison. And the ex-Fox pops it back to Jack Grealish. Spurs looking for their first chance here. But at the moment, defending very well. Not giving them a sniff. As Ferguson takes over. Very well done. Very well held up. I see Yusuf and Kanunen in the middle. And it will come to the latter who almost fires in our opener. Vicario with another smart save there. Push behind for a corner. Still goalless. Been a better team. Just haven't got that goal to show for it yet. Madison through the gap and oh what a finish. What a cool finish by the new gen. Slotted past Carl and Spurs have the lead against the runner play. That was stroked into the bottom corner. And uh, well, against the runner play we trail. Hmm. But this is, and I often talk about it, this is the problem. And this is the, uh, the difficulty of playing on ultimate. You might need several chances to score. The AI only need the one. It's on the clock, it's not looking good. Spurs aim to close out a win on the opening day. Four past dead on our chance for Ray Evan. Sinister, it's got to be. He's all alone. My goodness. What is up with my finishing in FC? It's so bad. And I get it, I've got precision finishing on. Which I like for the challenge, but... Dear, oh dear. The amount of missed chances today. But just in general in the save, man. Well, that is uh, not not quite how we envision the opening day going. Do I need another striker? <laughs> no, definitely not. But I'm not ending on that. I'm, I'm, I was playing just play the opening day today. But I'm not ending on a whimper of a 1-0 loss at home in the first game of the season. That's, that's pretty pathetic. And so, as you see those loan deals go through, Papa is off to Hull for a couple of years. So I love that loan deal there, going to the northeast. And uh, we'll see how he gets on there in the championship. And uh, Garrido is back to his native Argentina, off to Hurricane for a couple of years. We'll do one more and definitely end on this regards to the result. Bournemouth away from home, taking on Andoni's side, looking to bounce back and get our first win of the season. Need a much better performance than that opening day against Spurs, though. Come on, you swans. Sinistera to Bueno making his debut. Can he peg it back to him? Yes, he can. There's Kanunin in the middle. And Anton just couldn't get away from Ilya Zabanyu. As it's hoofed away as Dedic will win that header. Still deadlock, looking for that opening goal. Ferguson. Oh, rocket. Absolute rocket. And there's his first in a Swansea shirt. Struggled with him on the opening day. But that is what he's capable of, man. He is, right now, an elite finisher with his range of attributes. What shot power on that. We love that, we love that. Kanunum. Ferguson. Yusuf. Tattoo for two. Oh, a lovely little move. And the finish as well. Much better, much better. Sub power on the open day, but sometimes it just takes a game or two to get into the swing of things in the season. Match day two, much much better. That was, a, that was a really nice little move that and a great finish too. That's going to be your stage when it may. Oh man, this guy's solid, honestly. But again, this is why I don't really pay much attention to market valuation because he, since coming in, has been brilliant, man. And Ferguson's going to get his second on the afternoon as well. Dedic is like, he's dual-sided, he's great going forward, he's rapid, excellent energy and good in the air as well. Scoring, I think, four goals for the season last year. I think it was valued at like 36 mil at the end of last season. That's ridiculous. In modern day football, that's like half of what he's realistically worth. This guy is a baller, mate. Oh, lovely split there by Semenyo. Oh, it's great drilling. Oh, what an assist. I tell you what. So 
sometimes you just got to say fair play. What an assist from Antoine Semenu. He just split two defenders and then got around Shulman coming across. That is absolutely brilliant. Clean sheet's gone. None in two now. But wonderful, wonderful assist after the dribble in there. And maybe with the money we've got, it is indeed a new centre-half where we should be looking. We've considered Carl. I, I still think we're keeping us our number one this year. But I think maybe a new centre-half acquired now after no clean sheets in two. It's quite... <laughs> Quite, quite strict, quite harsh on Carl. But uh, hey, listen, you've got to make harsh decisions when you want to be an elite club. Yusuf, Kim, Ferguson chasing a hat trick. Oh, I'd love to get him one. But is Yusuf, oh, he still could, still could. Oh, but instead it's going to be an assist for AK, who will wrap it up. 4-1 Swans, free goal, cushion restored. And yeah, even though he fired a blank on the opening day, I wasn't too concerned about that. The rifle makes it for his first of the season. Game over. And that is a much, much, and I mean much better performance to end on than that whimper of a 1-0 defeat at home to Spurs as we see Ferguson bag his first couple of goals and the Swans get their first win of the season. And that will do it for today's episode and the season opener of the RTG Crimea, guys. So massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Don't forget, there's 77 million in the budget and still two and a half weeks to go into the trans window slam shot. So any more transfer targets, do let me know in the comment section down below as I still think we need a new center half and possibly a new backup right back free from there as well. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for next episode. We should make a couple more certain new signs of the money we've got we'll have the draw for the Champions League group stage I'm so excited for that and we should play our first CL game I think possibly as well if we've got time have a great day much love and I'll see you for the next episode very soon